Today, I'm fly fishing for California gold country trout in the Western Sierras. There we are. Yeah. But I'm hoping to strike silver. Oh, that's a, that is a wicked oh, rainbow. Oh, that's a big fish. Look at that. That is a big fish. <laughs> nice. There we go. Nice. Coming up right now. Hey everybody, welcome to Familiar Waters and FWFishing.com. I'm Mike Pulaski. Today, I'm fishing California's gold country, and there's a chance for really big trout. I'm fishing with my good buddy, John Drew, who is my college hunting buddy, so we go way back. Before we hit the river, make sure that you subscribe, ring that bell down below, give us a thumbs up, smash that like button, and leave us a comment because we would love to hear from you. Now, without any further ado, let's hit the river. Ooh, yeah, there we go. Nice. All right, Mike. Hit a baby, Johnny. What's the bug? What's the oh, oh. That's a pretty big fish too. Was it? You see that? I didn't. Today we're fishing one of my favorite rivers in the world. It's Yuba River in California. And we are in the heart of gold country. And this river is hit or miss. If you hit it, it can be some of the best fishing you've ever done in your life. If you miss it, you wouldn't think there's a fish in this river. Right now, we just got into our first fish. We've been switching bugs all morning, and we're gonna see if we can get into a couple more because we may have found the pattern. That's a good sign. It's a great sign. So Mike, you had mentioned, uh, you know, the Yuba is, is deep in gold country, which it is. And a lot of this material that we'll see on the side of the river as we float down today is all debris left over from the hydraulic mining era. <clears throat> and it's, uh, it's an outrageous amount of debris uh, that came down after the hydraulic mining. We, uh, you'll see when we go down here, they installed these things called training walls, which is where the Army Corps of Engineers actually had to come up the Yuba River and uh, dredge out some of the sides of the river to make it navigable. They basically, they just threw all the material up on the side and they also had to do it to help reduce the damage that was going on to the farmlands in the Central Valley of California because the river didn't have anywhere to go. It would just flow straight out onto its banks and this way it keeps the river more in check. All right, Mike, we're coming up to a good spot here on the right, about 20 feet out. Go for it. But all this material you know, from 150 miles away from here, uh, it all ended up here and then eventually a lot of the finer material ended up down in San Francisco Bay. There we are. Yeah, good throb. Nice. Nicely done, Mike. <laughs> He's an upstreamer. <laughs> I'm just going to pull over to the side. He's an upstreamer. Nice spot to catch him, too. Well, that's perfect. We were just talking about it. On this river, you'll notice all around us are gold tailings. And so this river was all dredged during the gold rush here in California. And so as a result, the river bottom is so flat, but it's still, at least up until the salmon numbers dropped out here in California, got a prolific run of salmon, which kept feeding this river. And the trout that come up here and the steelhead that come up here are absolute bodybuilders because they get all the protein from the salmon eggs. Every few years, this river gets scrubbed when we get the heavy rains in California. But when the fish are here and there's bugs in the water, they are athletic. He's a runner. It's a good fish, Johnny. Am I okay stopping here, you think? Yeah, I think you're fine. Cool. It was a good idea to shorten that up. Get that See him? drift through there. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that beautiful fish. That is just gorgeous. Oh, nice fish. That's a, that's a big fish. That's a good fish. <laughs> He's on the stone too. On that rubber legs. That, this awesome. bug has now caught fish on the Henry's Fork. The exact same. The bug. South Fork, the Trinity River, and now the Yuba. The exact same bug. Not the same pattern. The exact bug. The actual bug. Ready? Yep. Oh, that's a, that is a wicked oh, rainbow. Oh, that's a big Look fish. Look at that. That is a big fish. <laughs> Nice. 
Yeah, man. That's a big, big fish, that Mike. That really is nice. 22, maybe? What do you think? Yeah, bigger. He's, he's bigger, bigger than 22. He could be 23 inches. Technically speaking, by California regulations, any rainbow trout caught on oh this river gosh. that's over 16 inches is a steelhead. This river has access to the ocean. You know what? Ailman. Really? Was he yeah. on the Ailman? Yeah. Now, he may have spit out. Oh, look at that. You ready? Oh, my hands are wet. Let me get them wet. <coughs> nice fish. That Cromer. That is a beast. I mean, that. That's a trout right there. That is a nice fish. That's what we're talking about. You can see, beautiful fish. Okay. I'll put him back. You got him? Yeah. Okay. Here we go, sweetheart. Thank you. Oh, man. That's a big Yuba fish. Big Yuba fish. That is a cranking trout here on the Yuba River. And that's what we're going after all day long. I'm sure we'll mix in some 16s. And like I said, we've been looking for that pattern. But it ate the alevin, which is an immature, it's the, it's the crossover phase between a salmon egg and a salmon fry. I think we have the answer. She tells us we have the answer. There she goes, too. She's still going. Sweet. Yeah, Johnny. Awesome. Well, one of the things about the Yuba River is there is not a ton of bottom structure, especially stuff that you can tell from up top. It's much like the Yellowstone River in that regard. That means as an angler, you have to be on it all the time. And when you are constantly dialed in, constantly focused, you tend to get below. Nothing through. below the trout? Nope. Nope. Bottom of the drift? Sorry, I can't hear you. Really, I'm going to have you fish in the, the uh, drop. OK. But it's tough to hang in that drop. Digital guiding. It looks good from here. It looks sexy, huh? Boy, that's a wiggle. Don't start patting me. Well, I've never seen a rock shake like that. You've never caught rocks with me before. <laughs> well, some of us can tell the difference between a fish and a rock. Oh. Oh yeah. There we go. Oh, lost him immediately. I saw him that time though. Really? You yeah, that was a fish. Out. That was a fish. Oh, wow. Since they had all of those hydraulic operations out here during mining days, the river actually has a really flat bottom. And so what you're looking for are buckets, little holes, depressions, could be as much as a salmon red from the year before but just little things that can hold trout. There isn't a ton of midstream structure. And so if you can find the buckets or if you can find something in the middle of the stream where trout can orient, you're in good shape. Oh. There we go. Nice. There we go. That's what we're looking for. That's what we've been looking for all day. I saw a head come up right there. Real throbby too, Johnny. It's not a shaker. Nicely done. Well, we could, it took us a little while. Took a little while, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> never say never. So here we are. I'll tell you how long my watch died. Well, that's because it took over a year. We've moved into a new year. Yes, we have. good fish though. It feels solid. Yeah, I think this could be a function of fresh water today. Yeah. Oh, head shake, head shake. We fished a lot of sloppy seconds. Or fourths or fifths. Yeah, today at least, I saw at least eight boats down. Thank you. Yeah. I can't wait to see him. He feels pretty solid. Yeah, it's a good fish. Ooh. I didn't get a full look, but he didn't like what he saw. No.
Oh, oh, he's almost straight downstream. That didn't sound too good. <laughs> I'm gonna get out, John, so I can okay. walk and get even with him. So I'm not downstreaming him. Oops. He didn't like that very much, did he? Stay boat. Stay. Steve, get your boat trained. Oh no. Oh, it is. <laughs> oh. That's a trap. California brown trap. It is a trap. Oh, it is a trap. Yeah, it is a trap. Oh my god. So I thought it weird. turned into a squawfish there for so a second that light. I, think I there, swore that was a squawfish. I think there was a squawfish right there too, Mike. I, I don't know what happened. I there. swore that was a squawfish. Nicely done. Big wild fish. Thank you. Very nice wild fish. Wow. That was so weird. It was like the light caught it. It made it look like a squawfish. Look, squaw. she's still got her eggs in her. Right oh there. yeah. Big time. You can see the little bulge on her there. She's still loaded with eggs. Wild fish. She's still got her adipose fin. These fish up here are gorgeous. That's nice fish. That's just at 20 inches. Cool. Awesome. That is two absolutely fantastic fish on the Yuba in the same day. Not a ton of them, but biggies. But two really beautiful fish. Well, and that's our trip to the Yuba. Like I said, it can be hot, it can be cold, you can see heads rising everywhere, or it can be all subsurface stuff. Today, two gorgeous fish. The river can have days where it produces 50 fish, or have a tough day like today. So you never know with this river, but it's always fun to fish it. Johnny, thank you very much, okay. man. Thank you. Thank you. Well, it turns out that we were fishing behind four or five other boats. When we got down to the bottom, we finally figured that out. So we were fishing dirty water all day long. But still, two 20 plus inch fish in gold country is always worth the trip. Appreciate you guys watching. Don't forget, subscribe, hit that bell, give us a thumbs up, smash that like button, and leave us a comment down below. We would love to hear from you. You can also go to fwfishing.com for all the tips, tricks, techniques, tactics uh, that you'll need for your fishing from freshwater to saltwater. We have it all there at fwfishing.com. Appreciate you guys watching, and until next time, I'm Mike Pulaski, and I will catch you on the next piece of Familiar Waters.